want to give praise and glory to our Heavenly Father for affording us this opportunity to come together on this social media platform to worship and praise the Lord this morning. I want to acknowledge our worldwide leader, Pastor Willie Papu, and his wife and his children this morning. And not only that, I want to acknowledge his executive committee, uh, worldwide secretary, uh, Pastor Papa Li'i uh, Maspa'u this morning, and his wife and his children. And not only that, I want to also acknowledge our worldwide treasurer, Pastor Witu Ilangi Atatanwasa this morning. And not only that, I want to also welcome all of our pastors and ministers that are able to join us on this social media platform this morning. I want to welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. And not only that, I want to welcome all of our SISTAC members that are able to join us this morning so we can uh, lift praises to the Lord on this social media platform. Especially, I want to welcome all of our English-speaking family this morning uh, for joining us on this platform, and especially our young people that are able to join us this morning. These are the strengths and the hands and feet of our church this morning. I want to welcome you all in the name of Jesus this morning. So this morning, I just want to uh, keep our message really short this morning. I want us to be able just going to bring one short thought on this and so we can get grasp the, the understanding of what we're studying this morning. So with that, I'm going to ask you to just bow your heads with me and I'll go into prayer with us. Our dear gracious says, Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Lord, this morning. We well, thank you, Lord, that we can gather together this morning on a social media platform to worship and to praise you. Father, I ask that you may bless those who are watching in. And Father, especially hide me behind the cross. Let them not see a man, but see you only. Bless the hearers. Make this message as clear as possible. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We're going to get right into our message this morning. And we're going to start with our text this morning. We find it in 1 Kings 2, verse 3. 1 Kings 2, verse 3, it says, Keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimonies according to what is written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed in all you do and wherever you turn. This is what our morning devotion text is this morning. And it's based on this week's, the beginning of this week is a new theme. The theme is the blessings of God if you keep the commandments of God or the law of God. I want to I want to put this in context, so I want to be able to uh, understand. I want you to understand the context of why we're reading this text, because the context makes a whole difference. So this morning we're going to go back to First uh, Kings one and two, so you can find out why, the reason why, this text was given in place. Let me just read that back to First uh, uh, Kings, two verse one to three. Olfasa monga ilunga le kako screen da alelo fai kawo fa petania. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. He charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the worth, but be thou strong thereof, and show thyself a man. And the theme of our title of the uh, message this morning comes from this morning. This is a text that we have and comes from the title this morning. The last words of David to his son Solomon. We can put it the last encouragement, the last thoughts of David to his son Solomon. Now, the question is, how, what's the importance of these last words? The importance of these last words can help encourage us in today, in our time. But we're going to get to that. I want you to follow me together this morning. Why did David say these words to Solomon? And we find that in verse 4. Verse 4 tells us that. Why did David say these words, these theme words? We'll find that in verse 4. It says, if you read in verse 4, it says, The Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If the children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. 
ke ko vai la fasa mole ona le motu le o lo ngafa il no fo ali we said the first thing when you think about it, you think wow is david just thinking about his family and solidifying the throne through his family or fa pe or fa sa mo fa pe or manato ta vita na manato ta vita pe manato lang ai nga lava but that's not that's not what really what the depth of the truth is because the depth of the truth is David wasn't thinking about his family though he was but let me let me just sh- share with you the reason why I'm saying that David he wasn't thinking too much about his family but here's the reason why because number one, the title and the position that David held was was not from him his calling was not from him David wasn't seeking a title David wasn't seeking a position David wasn't even looking for a calling the calling and the position and the title was something that was given to him by God what was David doing during this time David was a shepherd out in a field and here's the one thing about David that you can understand David was very faithful in what he did in his private life at home that means David was very faithful in everything that he did he was a faithful shepherd and that's the thing about David that was known to God he was faithful and the bible says that those who are faithful in the little things will be faithful in the big things away from my own imagination it pull them tell so god you know when god chose david you know when god had put away saul and he wanted another king and they chose a king and the bible says that he wasn't looking at the outward appearance of a man but he's looking at the heart See David knew that God called him not because he was a strong fighter not because of anything but because he was faithful to all that God had spoken That's why it says on fa maoni ile tua on mafu anga le mana o ya so ita vita ya so monga ia mama lama ia fa maoni ile tua me being faithful to God See the text that we worried about keeping the laws and everything this is what David was trying to tell Solomon Solomon be faithful in all that God has spoken and automatically the throne will continue in our lineage see that's what David was really getting at cuz David know that the the throne of God could be given to another king just as he received that king but he wanted to to let Solomon know it's through the lineage it's through your faithfulness that that throne stays through our lineage so the, the first point here i want to make sure that it is our faithfulness to god that keeps us going amen now let, follow me see the shepherd king this is what they call the shepherd king the shepherd is when david was in his private life He was faithful to the little things. The king is when God took him from his private life and put him into the public arena and made him king of king, the king of Israel. Why? Because David was a shepherd king. But here's the thing that uh, that Solomon wanted to challenge him. He not only wanted to challenge him of how faithful he was in the little thing and how faithful he was he could be as a king, but just these are the last words of David that he wanted to challenge Solomon. There are three judgment that he wanted to challenge Solomon on and there's two things that he wanted to see if Solomon had that showed his faithfulness to God. Here's the first thing. Solomon uh, just as David was faithful to God David was trying to tell Solomon to also be faithful to God. But here's the two things. Now if you read them it says the wisdom of, Solom- of Solomon or the poto there a Solomon And let me just say if you further down verse 6 uh, we find this says deal with him according to your wisdom you see this is the first thing if you look at the judgment and the decision that David had to make in Israel David wanted Solomon Solomon to judge rightfully and so the first thing you want to do he would tell him you got to have wisdom now this wisdom is not the wisdom common knowledge wisdom It's not the wisdom that you can learn. It's not you learn in the world. He's talking about the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from God. That's the whole point. Olopoto mailetua. 
But find the more important there. How do we get this wisdom? This wisdom we get by listening to whatever God speaks, whatever God says, and to keep that wisdom and to use that wisdom to make judgments in difficulties and in times. This is the wisdom that God is talking about. The wisdom. The wisdom that is from God in all the sayings of God. Number two, the second thing. You see, what also Solomon wants to know is his kindness. Are you young or late? In your judgment, not only you're showing wisdom, but through this wisdom, you show your act of kindness. Your Lord, young or late. So not only that, see, first of all, we have the wisdom that's from God. And then through that wisdom, you show kindness. And here's what they said in the, this is what written in the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud. The highest form of wisdom is kindness. I just want to say that one. The highest form of wisdom is kindness. Ole poto silina fatino ina. Fatino ile agalei. Afa pe wa mo le poto mai le tua. Ye loa le anga malu mo le anga le. Pe a fai ro fit filinga. Pe fa masino voices. You know, coming back to uh, we're coming to a close here this morning. Oleale ta ua ole manatu a mun mun muda ta vita mulan fai. There is something that's a message for us. It says, See, God has called us to be kings and priests. That's the title we hold, kings and priests, when we're with God. And God said, if you want to keep that kingship, that title within your family, in your lineage, be faithful unto God. Teach your children to be faithful unto God. Don't be faithful to the faithful out. Not to be faithful to a church, but be faithful unto Jesus, unto God. That's what the whole message is. Now, what are you saying? That we shouldn't be faithful to the minister or our pastor? We shouldn't be faithful to the church? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you're faithful to God, automatically you'll be faithful to your parents. Automatically you'll be faithful to the minister. Automatically you'll be faithful to God. That's what it means to be faithful to God first in all these things will automatically come because you are called kings and priests of God. And not only, there's two things that you know to kings and priests. First, the wisdom from God that you're using to make your decisions and your choices in your family when you're trying to deal with difficulties and, and trouble sometimes in your family. Use the wisdom that God, that wisdom is founded on love. And the last thing, is to show kindness, because without love, there is no kindness. And with that, we're going to come to close to our message this morning. May God bless you this morning, and keep your heart. Shall we bow heads? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. Father, we just pray that our message this morning that you've given us, may we be faithful in all that you say. Father, we know there is a blessing in keeping your law. And so, Lord, we know that there's a blessing that comes to us when we're faithful in keeping your word this morning. Bless all the hearers and bless those who have joined us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray.